Hello, hello, everyone. <coughs> Where is... I have way too many tabs open. There we go. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Shashank, I'm a data analyst. Working out of Seattle, Washington, although I'm not there right now, I'm actually in Denver, Colorado. And we have our weekly live stream today. I try and do these live streams every Thursday and Friday. During the holiday season, I haven't really been able to do the Friday ones. Um, just because, you know, like Christmas Eve and uh, New Year's just didn't have much of a chance to do them. So welcome everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, let me see if I can get the... Okay, cool. So we have a chat up with a couple of questions. So let's get started. So Namat K. Hey, I'm going to graduate as a business major. Hey, Marshall Turner. Great to see you again. Samir Ranjan. I do remember you. I do remember you. Thank you guys so much for coming. I apologize so much for being late today. We had some network issues. Um, and I really will try to be uh, on, uh, more on time in the future. I uh, do apologize. Let's see. Uh... Hey, I'm going to graduate as a business major coming year. I've been learning Python since about a month and a half. Uh, is it impossible to learn data structure? Or wait, is it oh Im Im imperative? I get, oh, important to learn data structures and algorithms. Or am I biting more than I can chew? So data structures and algorithms, like the data structures part is important. Algorithms less so. Um, data structures and algorithms, or DSNA, is something that is usually more used by computer scientists uh, and software engineers, and less so by data scientists and data analysts. Um, you know, I would always say it's good to know more, but it is a, um, it, it is definitely not like one of the most important things you should be uh, focusing on. If you want to learn Python, what I actually recommend is going onto YouTube, going to my channel, Shashan Kalanithi, go down to my videos, you'll see near the bottom, there is a free Python course right over here. Um, and I would study that if I were you. So go ahead and check that out. That has uh, that should have all the information that you need to successfully learn Python or to get started with Python. Oh, hey, from Lubbock, Texas. Great to see you, Godfrey Mai. All right, let's see what else we got. And also, guys, um, uh, also uh, beware, the description in the video has changed. I've added a couple of uh, questions that are commonly asked. So make sure you check through that description first. And if you have a commonly asked question from there, your answer will probably be there. Uh, and I might be adding a couple of other things from here as well. Uh, Vilaz, hi from Greece. I have a BA in science. Uh, what type of science? Um, and I'm a master's degree as a business analyst. Uh, Vilaz, was there a follow-up to that? <clears throat> Ariane Dubey, hey, great to see you again. I started with my data analysis with Python. Also, awesome, awesome. Although my work doesn't relate directly to CS, I have been advised to automate certain processes. Should I practice? Should I practice problems on loops, or is there a better way to do that? Yeah, I mean, loops are, I mean, you know, I, I think there was a common joke um, that computer scientists have. It's like all of programming can be summarized into loops and functions. Um, and that's not that's not too far off from the truth, quite honestly. Like, even like engineers at Facebook, a lot of the times they're probably like, you know, creating uh, loops out of stuff just in very skilled ways. So um, although I would be aware of the processing power that you're using when you create loops, because it's very, very easy to like use way too much uh, processing power by creating a loop. That's generally how I solve my problems. It's a very simple solution to most problems that I might have. Neil Shaw, great to see you, great to see you. Marshall Turner, so um, a little bit of uh, information as to how I like answer the questions over here. You, oh, hey, what's up, Paulus? Um, I go through the questions usually from top to bottom. If I see a particularly interesting question towards the bottom, or I'm uh, there's a follow-up to a question at the bottom, then I'll go over there. Or if I see someone who appears on the live stream regularly, I'll usually answer their questions first. Um, you know, just to encourage regular viewership and stuff like that, and uh, say thank you for showing up to the live stream so often. Uh, Marshall Turner, currently building out a Django framework for my company. Awesome. Uh, know anything about how to post in Excel? Calculate something and export the result. Interesting. Post an Excel, so like post the entire Excel document or post like a section from the Excel document. I usually don't use um, Microsoft Excel for when I need to integrate spreadsheets to an API. I generally use uh, Google Sheets just because Google Sheets has this thing called Google Apps Script, which is a um, 
kind of like a JavaScript, uh, like, like Google's version of JavaScript that allows you to um, kind of programmatically do stuff with Google Sheets. So instead of learning VBA, which is like, it, it should be a dead language, it should not exist anymore, but Microsoft refuses to kill anything. Um, you can learn JavaScript, which is very much a, a, a live and well language, and use that with Google Sheets. So, uh, Marshall, do you have any more uh, information on this? Yes, uh, don't forget to like the live stream. Thank you so much. All right, next question. Ha, uh, Haley Delio. Uh, hey, I sent you a message on Twitter and I never heard back. What's the best way to talk about my situation with you? So the thing is, um, I... <clears throat> I get like a bunch of messages on Twitter and uh, Instagram, so I'll I'll respond to some of them quite honestly. But like, I mean, there's there there's just way too many for me to respond to. Um, I do respond to all messages on the Discord channel, which is through my Patreon. Though um, there was this person, uh, I think it was. Let's see. Let me see if I can get her name again. Uh, there was a Cindy Lou, and we had like this whole discussion over here on um, like a problem she was having. So. On my Discord, because <clears throat> the audience is a lot more limited over there, it's easier for me to answer questions. But uh, Haley Delia, what is your name? Are you Dougie Men's? I know I... Oh, oh, no, there you are. Okay, I see you. Let's see. Okay, so I just discovered you today, actually. I've been watching your videos nonstop. Uh, da, 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 da. Survey Monkey, very helpful. I have uh, gotten interviews, but I haven't gotten chosen yet because I don't think I do... Unfortunately, the interviews... Two languages I really want to get good at. Are there any books or online programs you think that could help me? Yes, okay, so if you want to learn Python and SQL, go to this video and check out the description. And you'll see um, over here under Roadmap to Become a Data Analyst, um, when I have my video, which is the Roadmap to Become a Data Analyst, I really do want to redo this video with like graphics and stuff. I feel like I could do a better job with it, honestly. Um, learn SQL, that's my free course, and learn Python. So I have a SQL and Python free course that will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Python and SQL. After you do these courses, you should be able to kind of start picking stuff up on your own. That's where I, that's kind of the goal of these courses. I remember when I first started to do um, data science, I didn't know any Python at all. And I tried to like make my own Kaggle workbook, but I could, or notebook, but I couldn't do anything. It was really, really difficult. And so this course was kind of created for like the Shashank of the past where I didn't know anything about uh, Python and SQL and like, what do I need to learn in order to get to a decent level of proficiency? So. Uh, Haley Dubé, uh, Dubé, uh, watch these, these, these links in the description of this live stream are what you want to check out. So, and I'll answer one more question and then I have a small surprise for you guys. Uh, Riaz, hey Shashank, I've completed, uh, Python statistics and machine learning. Can I start applying for jobs? 100%. Uh, I think, well, I mean, it, and... See, um, whenever you talk about jobs, guys, tell me like what type of job you want. Like, say, if you want to be a data engineer versus a data scientist or a data analyst, um, that drastically changes the advice I would give. Broadly speaking, um, I mean that's more than enough skills that I have. That's more skills than I have when I became a data analyst. So, Amar A, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The Jersey dude, welcome to becoming a data analyst. A Mecky with seven years of experience. I mean, I think yeah, you're more than ready to apply for jobs in that case. Uh, Guna Sauer, how do you get internship as a date without ex experience and referrals? The experience part shouldn't matter for an internship, quite honestly. Without referrals, cold email. Go to the website, go to um, LinkedIn and find out the HR managers and email them directly. Uh, that's probably the only way you can gain an edge if you don't have a uh, referral into the company. You have to just email people directly or message them directly. <clears throat> and as a side note, that um, I'm not at all saying that's a silver bullet that will not at all guarantee results, but um, it's the next best thing you have after a, a referral. It's just cold emailing. All right, guys. So before I get on to the next question, hey, what's up? <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome, welcome, uh, Stimpy Way. Thank you for joining. Hey, Pedro Mackay, great to see you again. Okale, great to see you, Okale. Uh, hope the job search is going well for you. All right, so it looks like we don't have any pressing matters right now. Let me So let me uh, quickly show you something that I made. So for anyone wondering what this is on the side, I made my own website. Um, just use Squarespace, super simple. Um, wish they would sponsor this live stream, but they didn't. Um, <clears throat> so feel free to check it out over there. Um, the important thing over here is that I have a newsletter that I'm coming out with, where, and I want to get y'all's opinion on it. So we're going to go over this real fast. Provide me with your opinion. That way I can make a better newsletter for you guys. 
The basic idea I have going on right now is that there will be a section for the most recent videos, usually the most recent live stream and the most recent video. And this will be a way for people to see um, if I have a new video without having to check YouTube all the time because I know YouTube doesn't have a um, great notification system. There might be a weekly poll over here of some kind. I'm trying to decide if I want to, like, you know, what I'm going to do with that. Um, there will be an interesting article, <clears throat> which is usually an article about data science or technology that has a, uh, that'll have, like, my notes and my thoughts on it. And I think that this is really important because um, in my interviews, the reason I'm actually quite good at interviews, um, one technique I use is to actually just read, read a bunch of articles and talk about a what a bunch of other companies do with their data science implementation. So I think even for you guys, if you are in an interview, having a better idea of what's going on in the greater data science space will be very helpful for anyone. Um, not just for interviews, but like when you're in your job, you might get a uh, an idea based on like what other companies are doing. So for example, this week's article, I'd be talking about Stitch Fix's engineering blog and how they talked about um, not uh, hyper specializing in data science, but like when you're creating a data science team, and what you actually want to do is you want to allow people to be somewhat generalist because data science is not like a factory. Uh, in a factory, it makes sense to have people hyper specialize because um, tasks are very well defined and they can be improved upon. You know, um, iteration after iteration. I I'm oversimplifying over here. If you look at like the Toyota production system and stuff, it's not. It doesn't work exactly like that. But with data science, it definitely doesn't work like that because it's a, it's a science in that a lot of data science is exploratory and therefore it makes a lot of sense for a single data scientist to like try out a large portion of the um, analytics pipeline. That way they have more information to derive better insights from the data. So that was a very interesting article. I'm going to write a bit of a um, summary on that and then put that on the um, newsletter as well. Data sets to practice with will be a section where um, I, any like data sets that I find that are like quite clean or really nice, or maybe even data sets that I create myself, I'll go ahead and put them over here. That way you guys can practice with them as well. There's a new series that I'm gonna be coming out with soon, um, going over F1 data. It's gonna be a really cool series, uh, and I hope to be coming out with that soon. And then jobs of interest. Um, these will basically just be jobs that I uh, find on LinkedIn and stuff that I think are pretty interesting and uh, might be interesting to apply to. So I think that, um, this is kind of the format of the newsletter that I have currently. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys think that there's any improvements that we can uh, make. And uh, please go to my website and subscribe to the newsletter. That way, you know, we can send this out. The jobs of interest, the thing that I think could be quite interesting about this is in the future, uh, companies that might be wanting more people to apply to their jobs or want more visibility to jobs that they have on the, uh, on the docket, especially with the labor shortage going on right now, maybe they could sponsor a job spot over here. Of course, I would disclose that and say, this job spot was sponsored. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think this might be a really cool endeavor for us in the future. So if you're at all interested, feel free to uh, subscribe by going to the website I linked above. And uh, let's get back to answering questions. Uh, oh, another quick thing. Um, I get a lot of questions asking me, I get a lot of people asking me questions about like the Indian market specifically. Um, I don't work in, nor have I ever worked in the Indian market. So I can say a couple of like just generalizations that I'm like aware of by being, by like, cause I know some people there. Um, but if you ask me questions specifically about like India, um, I won't be able to answer those questions accurately. Uh, I've only worked in the United States my entire life. Uh, I am working on getting someone who is from the Indian market onto this uh, live stream at some point in time, but uh, I currently do not have that. All right, let us get back to answering questions. Uh, Samir Ran uh, Ranjan, uh, can you suggest me the steps I should follow to get an internship somewhere as a data analyst? Uh, so Samir, that question is very similar to uh, roadmap to become a data analyst. So that the steps are listed in the description below. Uh, okay, next. Uh, Saiki, hey, I'm a data analyst. Uh, do you have a method to form some hypotheses on a problem? So Saiki, could you give me a kind of like a specific problem you're looking at? Um, usually what I do is I do a little bit of exploratory data analysis uh, on where on the data that like is related to the problem, uh, try and figure out what's going on, what data we have access to. I go ahead and I ask a, a bunch of subject matter experts, usually business people, what is the real life implication of this data? So for example, if I'm working in styling at Nordstrom, Nordstrom's a company I work at right now, uh, it's a, a major North American um, fashion retailer, uh, and we're trying to decide how to better staff employees, for example, I might ask what are the actual um, 
uh, implications of like maybe HR data and uh, people clocking in and clocking out. How accurate is that relative to like your real life experience? So I'd say get some data and then go to a business person and start asking them questions because they are <clears throat> they're the ones with the ears to the ground and they're the ones that actually know what's going on. Um, so I would highly recommend asking uh, them after you get some data. All right, so Marshall Turner, let's see if I can answer your question over here. <clears throat> Sweet, thank you so much. Um, let's see. Could you use uh, suggestions and some tips? Yeah, so I think a technical tip might be something interesting. So maybe like I've, I've been working on window functions a lot recently, so that might be something interesting to work with. All right, so Marshall Turner, you asked a question. Yes, Squarespace is definitely the answer. I love it. Um, okay, the user uploads an XLSX document to their website. It pings our database and pulls a result. The result is a data frame. I take that and XLSX writer in it, uh, and oh, basically I write it to an Excel, basically, okay. The user can pull via a download button, change to CSV. Uh, and then, so what was the question? Might be missing something. Uh, export the result. Okay. Um, so actually, I personally would recommend putting it on a Tableau dashboard if you could. Um, that may not be the best situ solution for your team. I know that people are kind of married to Excel. Um, and so getting them away from Excel is not necessarily the easiest uh, or most effective use of your time. The easiest thing to do or the most effective use of your time. I would warn you against the CSV only because CSVs... Um, can really screw up like data types. Um, so I would recommend a format where you can maintain data types personally, depending on what you're doing, you know? Um, so for example, if your CSV has like like zip codes inside them, um, it, they might just get dropped by a CSV whenever Excel reads them in because leading zeros, like such as zip codes from Maine, those um, are not recognized by Excel unless you import the data in a very specific way. It's really, really annoying. Um, so I argue against CSVs personally, and I argue against giving people raw data. I argue against giving most users raw data unless they, can, unless they really do need it, and would argue to put it inside a database and have them access it through a Tableau dashboard. But that may not be the best solution for your team. Uh, okay, so next question. Mm, let's see. Okay, Nachi Kitare, How to Study Stats for Data Science. Um, there's a great book called um, Statistics for Data Scientists or something like that. Let me see. It's uh, I have a series of it on my YouTube channel. Highly recommend the book. Here it is. Yeah, Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. Uh, one of my most viewed videos. Highly recommend it. Um, let's see. What Who was I adding? At... I highly recommend you check that out. Um, I have a series of the first three chapters, which goes over basic statistics and is a great overview of what you need to get started for, with statistics and data science. Metamine, uh, Metamine, hello, I just finished the Google Data Analytics certificate. I want to know if domain knowledge is important to get a job or I can work in any domain. I'm kind of a believer that prior to um, maybe like five years of experience or something, domain knowledge doesn't really... Let me back it up. Let me, let me back it up. There are certain jobs where domain knowledge is extremely important, and they'll let you know that in the job description. Um, like there are certain jobs you can't just like get into just because you have the skills. They expect you to know about the domain as well. Um, <clears throat> so I would say for most jobs, though, that's not the case. I never had domain knowledge in anything I worked in prior to getting the jobs I, di I did. Uh, and most of the jobs I applied to, same thing. There was a limited need for domain knowledge. That being said, if you need domain knowledge, you can always prove that out at an elementary level or at an entry level quite easily by just going online, doing a lot of research. Um, again, outside of like hyper-specialized fields, uh, you can go online, do a lot of research, and kind of like fake domain knowledge uh, by saying like, or I mean, you're not really faking it, you are building knowledge, you know, um, and kind of putting together like a um, small wiki for the HR rep whenever you submit your application. Uh, cold email them and, and then say, hey, here's like a small summary of like the domain knowledge I have in this field. Um, I would say the great thing about applying for jobs is that 99% of people just submit in uh, like the same resume over and over again with no like, uh, what do you call it, um, customization or anything. The flip side of that though is also like probably 
I don't know about a majority of the jobs. I remember reading somewhere it might have been a majority of the jobs. Um, but if not a majority, a very large proportion of jobs are never make it to market because they just find someone um, like through connections. So as a bit of a side note to everyone, I would say that um, whether you're social or not, it's incredibly important to start building connections in the workplace. Uh, and connections basically are just people who like, honestly, people who like like you and respect your professional intelligence. That's a, that's a connection. Um, my second job was actually from a manager at my company who jumped ship and went to a different company. Guy didn't know me that well, but he just like, uh, he liked me and he respected my professional competence and he was willing to offer me a job. Uh, the job never went to uh, a job board or anything. I just got it basically. So. As a bit of a side note, I think a major skill in corporate, a corporate anywhere really, is building out connect, <clears throat> connections and making sure people like understand that you are a professionally competent individual. So, uh, just a couple of things I want to like put out there. But yeah, domain knowledge either you know learn it yourself, or I would say I didn't have any domain knowledge prior to any question or jobs I took. Courses you would recommend for data analysis. So, uh, Kazi Faid, go ahead and check the description of the video. I have a bunch of free courses, um, and I have a free machine learning course that I put out recently. If anyone wants to learn how machine learning works, then feel free to go to, uh, again, go to YouTube, go to my channel, uh, and it should be like one of my most recent videos, Machine Learning for Beginners. Um, this was my first sponsored video, so anyone who hasn't already, if you would like that video, that would be awesome. I have to like, it's a great way to like prove to the sponsors that like when they're on my channel, it's uh, a worthwhile investment for them and it helps me make more and more videos and uh, increase the production quality of my videos as time goes on. All right, so let me just make sure. Hey, Marshall Turner, welcome to Analytics Prime. Thank you so much for joining. Great to see you, great to see you. Uh, Ghazi Ravka, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Of course, of course. Um, I'm actually running a lot of 3-zips, so thank you for letting me know. 3-zips? What's a 3-zip? Your laptop fan is pretty loud. Uh, I apologize. It's a it's a gaming PC. I'm not, I can't really do much about it, unfortunately. Um, I just put it on silent. I apologize. Beyond that, I can't really do anything. I don't have my, I'm not at in Seattle right now, so I don't have my like, normal like mic setup. Um, when I get back, uh, I'm going to have like a better mic setup, so I do apologize. I'll try and speak above it, but thank you for letting me know that. Um, Unfortunately, I can't really do anything about it right now. Hey, thank you so much, Marshall. What's with the F1 data set? Uh, Jeet Patil. Okay, let me see if I can get to that in a minute. Um, started my project on the Titanic data set. Congratulations. The F1 data set is basically every single F1 race from uh, the 1950s onwards. Um, me and my girlfriend have really gotten into F1 recently. We've been watching Drive to Survive. Um, great show, by the way. I highly recommend it to everyone. And I really want to go to an F1 race at uh, some point in time next year. So we'll see if COVID calms down and I can go. But um, yeah, that is the next series of videos I plan on doing will probably be about uh, that data set. So, all right, next question, next question. Neil Shaw, I believe that your question was next. Hey, I'm pursuing uh, computer science with a data science major. Cool, cool. They didn't, I didn't even think they had data science majors when I was in uh, college. I have all sort of courses for the degree, but I want to focus on data analysis. I need to know how to develop skill sets along with the degree. Okay, so Neil Shaw, uh, that is similar. If you go to the video description, roadmap to become a data analyst, uh, learn a BI tool like Tableau or Power BI. I have a free course right over here in Tableau. Learn SQL. I have a free course in SQL right over here. Learn Python. I have a free course in Python right over here, all available in the video description. If you want to learn uh, machine learning, so for, and I'll put optional, learn machine learning free course uh, and then we'll put that right over there oh I need the short link um, I think the short link is just that And uh, thank you guys so much for sending questions over Instagram and stuff. I will try and get to them, but I uh, will be 100% honest. I can't pro promise um, of getting to questions on Instagram and Twitter just because I get so many of them. But if you send me a uh, – if you join either the YouTube membership or you join the uh, Patreon, then on my Discord, I answer all questions over there. Um, I'm, I'm very diligent about answering those questions. Okay, cool. So, uh, yes, machine learning over there. So let me save that. Let's go back over here. Uh, Stefan, hey Stefan, great to see you again. Uh, data analyst neutral with his data findings or should they advise stakeholders? Okay, cool. 
this is an amazing question. Are data analysts, or sorry, should data analysts be biased or not? I think it's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a personal um, question. I think the most ideal data analyst understands the biases of their business stakeholders and will analyze data with those biases in mind both in a good way and a bad way. In a good way being that they understand um, where maybe the deficiencies in thought process might come from a business stakeholder, like just some like, uh, deficiency sounds like a really like extreme word, but like more like the uh, blind spots might be, and tries to answer questions understanding that. Another thing I would say is whenever you present data to stakeholders, especially executives, um, a good executive, and I've been so lucky and so blessed to have worked with executives that I broadly respect. Um, a good executive knows their numbers really, really well. It's actually incredibly impressive to see a good executive work, like do their job because a good executive is able to get down to the like absolute nitty gritty of a discussion without getting like caught up in it. And a lot of that comes from like them already knowing the data. And as a data analyst, you're kind of supposed to take that understanding to the next level. Um, so I would say understanding the biases of the executive because they're familiar with their business um, group and they're familiar with their like the data that uh, you're working with. Understanding those biases and working with those whenever you present data to them is very important. So for example, um, maybe executives are not particularly happy with the uh, HR data and the quality of the HR data. So you kind of have to ease them into it. If you have like a new HR system and say it works really well or something, you have to like, kind of ease them into it and get them like into uh, understanding that the new HR data is significantly better and build up credibility with those executives. So that's a really long way of saying um, understanding the human aspect of presenting data is just as important as understanding the data itself because you can have the most wonderful an an analysis in the world. And this is like a problem I have personally. You can have the most wonderful analysis in the world. If you don't understand the human aspect of presenting data to people, no one will care and all of your work will mean nothing. Um, which is why presenting, like understanding your stakeholders is incredibly important. As far as being unbiased, I am of the opinion that you should not be unbiased as a data analyst. Um, you should show bias, but you should be clear what that bias is. Like when I present stuff, I will say, this is my opinion over here. Like I'll say like, here's all the data, here's my opinion. Um, and I kind of believe that you need to do that because as you get higher and higher up in corporate America, your opinion is what people are gonna be asking more of. Like kind of like the lower level you are, people are just asking like, just give me like straight reports, straight facts, that's it. You know, like don't insert your opinion over here. But like, I think developing a very well established and respected opinion is a great skill to build in any, you know, job you do. And that's why I believe that being biased, um, but explaining your biases very clearly. Let us see. Yeah, Marshall Turner is exactly right. A good executive can guess a number without calculating it at all. They, they, um, they yeah, yeah. Good executives are incredibly impressive because they got there by um, knowing the business very, very well. So yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Paulus. Uh, let's see. Hey, Anika, great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, Simpy Way, great to see you. What do you need ERPs for in data analytics? Uh, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource uh, Planning, I think. It's Enterprise Resource Planning, right? ERP, yeah. Enterprise, so it stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. And basically, uh, long story short, it's, I kind of call it like the pipeline of your business. Like all of your like uh, P&L data more or less goes through your ERP system. Uh, it's, it's money coming in, money going out of your company and um, units going in and units going out of your company. And it's kind of like the like glue that ties together all of your other data systems or i mean not really your crm might not be connected to your erp for example but like it should be um long story short your core business data such as your financials and your units um stuff like that that's usually stored in an erp system and so depending on your job it might be very important that you have a good understanding of erp uh data <laughs> um by the way, guys, uh, yeah, so if you want, I, I would highly uh, recommend you sign up for the newsletter, totally free. Um, I wanna work on my writing skills and I think it would be a good way for me to communicate with you guys because one thing that kind of sucks about YouTube is that YouTube doesn't really like allow you to communicate with your like subscribers. I, like, I really wish YouTube had a DM feature. Um, 
YouTube, please add a DM feature to YouTube. It would be the nicest thing ever. My God. Um, but uh, this is a great way of me showing you the other aspects of data analysis. I want to expand this channel out of like just pure technical stuff because I think that while the technical, I think the technical stuff is like the most important to start off with. But as you get better and better at data analysis, um, the technical stuff starts to become less important, and then it's more about you know the other stuff. So um, yeah, if you could sign up for the newsletter, that's a great way of me spreading out others, spreading other knowledge. Uh, okay, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Next question. Also, just as a heads up, guys, um, if you've been to these live streams, you'll know like I never get through all the questions. Like in order to provide like a good answer to people, um, it's literally impossible for me to get through all these questions. If you really want me to answer your question, uh, if you send me a super chat, I, I guarantee I answer those questions. Uh, anyone that's been here regularly will like know I answer those questions regularly. Of course, Haley, I'm glad, glad I was able to answer your question. Uh, do I do I have to do paid certificate courses for certifications? N absolutely, positively not. You can become a data analyst 1,000% for free. You do not have to pay for anything except for maybe a college degree. Um, and I, I, you know, it kind of sucks because like, having been in the field for a while, right? I don't believe that it is at all necessary. I don't think that like from a skills perspective, it is at all necessary for anyone to have a college degree to like get a job. And if it was entirely up to me, I would drop the college degree requirement from any job that I was uh, um, putting out there, quite honestly, because I, I have never met anyone where, uh, for a data analyst, data scientist is a little bit different, but I've never met, met anyone for a data analyst where I could very clearly tell, oh yes, your degree helped you you know, do this analysis, pick up these skills. In fact, I mean, most people I know, like they picked up the skills off the, like, on the job anyways. Um, that being said, I think that if you have the ability to get a bachelor's degree, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, because in the U.S., it's kind of like a checkbox that you have to fill out, um, you know, a 60, 60 to $150,000 dollars checkbox that you have to fill out uh, in order to pass ATS, quite honestly. Um, and that is something I do have to recognize. Whenever, like, I talk about, like, so I talk about how I kind of, like, hustle my way into my job. I should also recognize that, like, there's a privilege, like, associated with just having a degree um, that not everyone has. And if you have the ability to, I highly recommend getting a degree of some kind. That being said, I have a chemistry degree and I got my job. So, I mean, I w if you can choose to get a relevant degree, obviously do that. But if you don't have a relevant degree, I mean, you know, I have a chemistry degree and like, you know, I don't, <laughs> I, I have a pretty solid job in analytics. Docs Batnagar. Uh, hey man, what's going on? How's the Omicron situation over there? Hey, uh, no, great to hear from you. Actually, I mean, I'll be 100% honest. I actually... I've kind of just been like heads down and like don't know what oh my god wow it's really bad okay so it looks like this is the worst um there are more covid cases in the in the united states right now than there have literally ever been huh so i guess the omicron situation is quite bad i'm inside most of the day so i actually i didn't know about that at all but um yeah no it looks like omicron's really really bad but let's look at um deaths um obviously like you know just because you don't die doesn't mean getting covid didn't suck but it looks like at least deaths are not as bad as they were back in December. So on that front, it is not as bad as it used to be. Um, oh, but also like it looks like it's a, it's a trailing figure. So I would say broadly speaking, it's pretty bad in the U.S. Um, I, I I don't think we still haven't reached a seventy percent vaccination rate. Oh yes, and everyone, make sure if you uh, haven't already, make sure to go get your vaccines and get your boosters. I'm going to be getting my booster next week. Uh, I already have my Pfizer vaccine, and uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's see if we can get, we can uh, uh, get get rid of COVID. It's uh, not helping anyone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, make sure to go get your vaccines, please. Troy R. I started a new data analyst job on Monday. Any tips on how to get off on the right foot? Well, congratulations, Troy R. Everyone, give him a round of applause. Um, if you get a job, by the way, make sure you list it in this like chat. We always congratulate people that get jobs. It is the core function of this entire live stream is to get people jobs. All right. So, uh, any tips on getting off on the right foot? Meet as many people as you can, um, even those not directly related to your job. Uh, get to know them, build up a friendly relationship with them, and ask them what are like one or two things that kind of like bother them about their job. But find a nicer way to put it, but like kind of like what are like one or two like data problems that they have. Make sure you're very, very clear when you ask this question though, that you're not asking it to solve it immediately. Just kind of ask, make, make sure you're asking it for your own curiosity. Write it down. Oftentimes the first couple of months in your job, uh, and it depends on the job, it's, this isn't the case for everyone, but oftentimes, you won't have all that much work. And by writing this down, you've given yourself a list of um, actual work that will improve people's lives that you could do and really like show your manager, hey, I'm like a, um, 
I'm like a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A driven person, you know? And I like get stuff done. So that is a piece of advice I got that I um, highly recommend to everyone. Thank you so much, Raphael Mosquera. Asset Nayak, how to process distribution with two bells or what to do with that? Any type of feature? What to and how to transform? Can you do a feature transformation that turns it into a singular, like a, a bell distribution with just one bell? Um, but if it has two bells, I mean, that's not necessarily bad, right? That just means you might have, what I might do is I might switch it and say there's like two means in the data set and like do a mean for each half of the data set. A um, couple of things you could do with that, quite honestly. How can I best practice to run into the loops problem to get better? That's a tough one, honestly. I would say just keep, like, I would say uh, get into a little bit of web scraping maybe. I use loops a lot in web scraping, um, so that might be a great way to do it. All right, let's see what we got down here. Oh, Nikhil, interesting question. Should I leave my current job, which is not related to my passion, related to data, my passion? Um, so that's a really complicated question. Um, I, cause, cause I have, uh, no idea what your financial situation or anything is like. Broad advice I would give people. Life is too short to not do what you like. To, we spend eight hours a day at least, you know, like in our jobs. Um, and then really more if you think about it. And life is too short to not do what you want to do. That being said, life also sucks when your finances aren't in order. Um, so I'm kind of of the opinion that like, get your finances sorted. Uh, make sure you have like a solid, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, emergency fund, maybe a couple of investments, um, and that you can you have enough money to live like six months to um, without a job. After that, I'm very much of the opinion that you should like pursue your passion with a lot of vigor because life is too short not to do that. And more importantly, I found that as an adult, the older I get, the more inertia dictates what goes on in my life, uh, and my life is kind of like dictated with inertia by inertia like you know in school things would change like there was this very clear delineation of year by year like fourth grade fifth grade sixth grade seventh grade but like as an adult um years start to kind of like mold together and go together so it's very important i think as an adult to actively pursue what you want to do because it's really easy to spend five to ten years kind of just cruising along um and, and you know maybe it's maybe it's a good job but you know why don't you go to an amazing job so a little bit of advice over there but i can't tell you whether you should quit your job or not that's just kind of my general life advice. Okay, so Marshall Turner made an interesting point about uh, COVID over here. Okay, hospitals are back on code red. Okay, so that, yeah, everyone, make sure you get your vaccines. Um, and I would also say, like, for New Year's, maybe, like, you know, keep it a little bit chill. Um, that might be a good idea, too. Omicron is highly contagious but has not shown as crazy detrimental as the original strain. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Um, I am not at all an epidemiologist. I wonder if that means that the strains will get more infectious but less dangerous as time goes on. I'm not at all an epidemiologist. I'm just wondering, you know. Uh, hey, Calvin Joe, it's great to see you again. Uh, Ishan Dandekar, yes, I will. Uh, oh, and thank you so much for showing up so much. I, you're on, like, all the live streams. Uh, but, yes, I'm going to be doing a project on the F1 data set. I am organizing some stuff with some people in the background. This YouTube channel is going to go gangbusters next year we're gonna hit 150,000 subscribers next year i told my dad right i'm like dad i want to hit 100,000 subscribers and he like he's like oh wait Sean, how many subscribers do you have right now i'm like oh, about like 60k and he's like when do you start the youtube channel i said well i started it like in 2019 but effectively like you know or 2020 but like effectively you know in march of this year and it's like you, you should set your goals to be higher so um 150,000 subscribers let's go ahead and do it so if you haven't subscribed already make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel please Poland, 50% vaccinations. Damn, man. Yeah, it's, uh, is it, is, do you know if this is a problem of, like, vaccine hesitancy, or is it a problem of, like, access to vaccines? Uh, let's see. Deaths in the UK, 2015. 2015? What's the... Oh, 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 just like generally how many people in the UK have died. So basically 15% more people in the UK have died in the year 2020 versus the year 2015, presumably because of COVID. Um, that, that, that's the guess I'm guessing. Uh, hey, uh, Tech Guru, a Google Data Analytics Certificate is a great certificate. And I think, I mean, it's, it's as good as it's going to get as far as certificates that will help you get a data analyst job, yes. Uh... 
I really thought you were at two times speed then. No, yeah, I just speak really, really quickly. Um, it, it, as a little bit of a side note, I, I remember reading somewhere that they said that people who speak more slowly actually sound more intelligent. Um, the funny thing is, like, I was, I was watching Friends recently, right, and Tom Selleck is in there, and the man, like, I realized, like, part of, like, ooh, the way he's able to command so much respect, like, whenever, like, and, and this happens in any show he's in. It was Magnum P.I. was the exact same thing. Um, that police show, Blue Blood's the exact same thing. I feel like him speaking slowly is part of the reason he commands so much respect. So I'm like, huh, something, maybe, something maybe I should think about. India has really bad numbers. Um, India is interesting. So, like, when I, like, look up India, it seems like COVID doesn't even exist over there. But, like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just be 100% honest. I have a very, very hard time believing that these are accurate numbers. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I have a very hard time believing this is, like, at all accurate in India. Like, I have family in India. There's no way this is accurate. So, if someone from, like, India could tell me, like, what's up with this graph? And, like, did the government just, like, give up on, like, reporting numbers or something? Uh, and let me go back to trying to answer some questions. I think... Gautam Pruthi, hello, hello. What's your New Year's resolution, Shashank? Oh, I have so many. I think uh, maybe next week I'll share them with you guys. I, I need to still organize them a little bit, uh, but maybe I'll share some of them with you next week. Some of them are obviously pri private, but, you know, I'll share some of them with y'all next week. Uh, Sam, do you think machine learning by Andrew Ng is still worth it and getting started from it? Yeah, 100%, although I would highly recommend my own machine learning course first. Uh, what would be the best master's degree for an aspiring data scientist? Uh, tough question. I have been told a statistics degree is the best one out there. But there are obviously also like purpose-made data science degrees these days, so something to keep in mind. Also, guys, we only have three minutes left, so just as a heads up, I'll answer maybe like two more questions and then head out. Uh, and I apologize. You know, like I like I mentioned, um, we never answer all the questions in this chat. Like it just never happens. Um, so yeah. Oh, if you die from a heart attack and you have COVID, it's considered a COVID death. Okay, okay. Hey, Ti, this might be a great analysis for you to do. I mean, you know, COVID data. Like, there's tons of data on COVID that you could totally like work on if you're uh, interested. What's the future of data analysts as a career? Will it be automated? I don't think it'll be fully automated. Um, It'll be, okay. Um, I don't think it'll be fully automated. I think it'll be like large, I, I think data analysts will turn into cyborgs um, in the sense that like you will have, you won't have to know how to code nearly as much. You will have a lot of tools that'll do a lot of the uh, grunt work for you. So for example, like SQL queries, right? Like the skill is very important to learn today. And at least for the foreseeable future, SQL is not going anywhere. Uh, but I have a feeling that a lot of companies will come on with tools that will help you, like, abstract away SQL from the job. And actually, like, I would personally prefer that. I Like, writing SQL is, like, fun, but it takes so much of my time to write, like, very advanced queries that do what I want them to do uh, effectively. Because the problem is you can't just, like, write – like, just writing SQL queries to do what you want to do step by step is easy. Um the hard part is when you have enough data, then um, queries like have to be efficient too. Um, and that's kind of the problem I'm having right now at work where I need to write these queries and like the logic is not complicated, but the logic to be efficient, that way I can actually run the query in like less than 10 minutes, uh, that's where it gets kind of complicated. So just as a little bit of a heads up. I don't think that the job will be uh, automated away. I think certain aspects of the job will be automated away, but the core, um, the core of like actually analyzing data and stuff, that'll be there. Uh, I think that'll be a human pursuit for a while. Uh, how much do you earn? I earn in the six figures. I might have a video in the future where I like specify like specifically how much I earn, but like, um, so in the uh, six figures for anyone not aware, six figures in the US means over 100,000 US dollars. So I, I'm, I'm in the six figures basically. I might have a video in the future where I talk about specifically what I earn, but uh, I definitely want to make a full video on that because uh, those videos seem to do pretty well. What industry is good for data anal uh, an analysis? Uh, marketing. Marketing is an amazing field for data analysis. In South Africa, we have a oversupply of vaccines. People refuse to take the vaccine, so government's making it mandatory. Honestly, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm very much in favor of just making vaccines mandatory. Um, obviously, like, you know, subject to... I, I think some people just can't have vaccines because like some like biological things. Obviously, don't you know they don't have to have it. Um, in the U.S., I think you always have to have a. I, I'm, I'm, this is not my opinion, but I think kind of legally you always have to have a out for people who have like religious convictions because 
uh, freedom of religion. You can say you can, you can say anything about a religion and then say like my religion believes this and get out of almost anything in the U.S. is my understanding. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely something I'm a big proponent of personally. What is your first goal in this field? Uh, I would like to become a data scientist. That's my next goal. Um, so a news resolution, like I want to become a data scientist next year. Like confirmed, it's a title at a major company. Um, like on my LinkedIn profile, I'll say data science because I do data science work. Uh, but I want like the job title from a major company. Uh, do you offer one-on-one -on -one Q and A like fifteen minutes? You know what? Honestly, I think I might start the. I I really do want to offer it. The only problem I have with offering a one-on-one -on -one Q and A is that um, I would have to charge a certain rate for it, and I that rate would not be affordable to people from uh, specifically from countries like India and stuff like that, where the currency doesn't convert as well to U.S. dollars. Um, and so I'm hesitant to start that because I don't want to get into a position where I'm providing a significantly better service to people who can pay um, versus people who can't. My my Discord is different because it's like $5. So I'm like, I mean, you know, it's not that expensive. Um, so I'm not saying no. I'm saying I really have to think about it. It's like I think it's a bit major decision I, I, I will make. But, um, you know, stay in tune. Subscribe to my newsletter if if you want to know if I start it like it's going to be on the newsletter That's how I'm going to communicate with you guys All right guys, I'll answer one more question and then head out. Hey light Yagami uh, death note Someone asked if I watch anime. I'm um, not actively, but like I, I'm like if you have any good anime feel free to like uh, recommend them uh... Ah, Interesting Let's see Ooh, Shakar Saxena, how to explain projects that are mentioned in the resume for data analyst interviews. Use the STAR method. Go online, look up the STAR method on, uh, like on Google, and use that method. That's the best way, excuse me, to explain a project that you did. How to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, go to my website over here. Go to that website. Um, and go to Shashank's newsletter, type your email, and it'll be over there. Is BI and data analyst the same? No, they're similar, but not the same. Uh, I would say data analysts tend to be a bit more technical. BI people tend not to be. Uh, they, they work a little bit more on, um, what do you call it, on uh, like Tableau and stuff, whereas like data analysts work on like SQL. Okale, you should add, think about adding a forum to your site. I think that's a good idea. Um, Maybe we could kind of become like the Linus Tech Tips of the analytics uh, space. You know, like Linus Tech Tips, like he has his brand, yes, but his brand is kind of like a whole like PC gamer-ish type of person. Like they all kind of congregate there. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's like a thing in the future. I like this idea. Um, will you try deep learning? I'm seriously considering it for sure. Yes, yes. All right, guys. So I think that is about everything. And I am going to head out right now. Thank you guys so much for joining. You guys are what make this channel possible. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the video. Let us go into the 150,000 subscribers this year. We got it. We'll do it. Subscribe to the newsletter for more information. And I'll see you guys later. Um, food tutorials, data analysts usually get paid better.